Hey everyone, Marcus here with Audio Plugin Deals, here to walk through Lucidverb as we're exploring it a little bit for this upcoming deal. So stay tuned and we'll dive in and see what we found. So the main things that we'll be focusing on while I'm walking through this are going to be the number of presets that it comes with, the quality of the sound that you get from those presets and how you can tweak it and play with it, and also how I finally had a nice little push to start working with surround audio or Dolby Atmos and uh, spatial audio. So you'll see I'm actually wearing some AirPods here uh, to to get a different experience on the spatial audio instead of my normal stereo mixing headphones. So um, we'll, uh, we'll dive in a little bit and see how Lucidverb plays with some of those more advanced and surround formats. So first, let's just take a look at a little bit of uh, before and after for how this sounds on a little music box sound. Just something basic here to give you the idea of, of a couple of the sounds in it. Let's zoom in a little bit on that, see what's going on here. So uh, when I'm listening to this, just soloed. You know, just like with a lot of other reverbs, we've got our main controls across the top here. Uh, this is just one of the presets that I found while I was playing around with it a little bit ahead of time, seeing which ones stuck out to me. So this is kind of a longer reverb. Uh, you've got your length that you can set, pre-delay, the level of your dry uh, sound, or they call it the direct level here, and then your reverb level. So those are you know some of the familiar controls that you should find from other reverbs, and uh, those live right here. Um, you can save each of the presets. You can see I've already got a couple pulled up here. So just once you start finding uh, your own sounds that you like, you can drop them into this little memory bank at the bottom. So. So these were just a couple that I found kind of interesting. So I found a little uh, uh, bright small room here that I modified. And then more of a plate reverb here. And then switching between the length here, we'll just play around with these settings. So you can hear that pre-delay starting to kick in, That just that little bit of uh, kind of echo before that reverb hits. Now you can really hear the pre-delay. We'll take that back off since it's just the reverb. Let's lengthen that up again just to kind of hear it again. And you can see the just kind of cool visualization there updating as I'm playing around with these sounds. So, uh, you know, these are just a couple of the presets. They've got a ton of different categories here. Uh, and like I mentioned, you know, you've got um, a lot more of these presets that I feel like would be a really good fit for doing audio in film and, and finding the right kind of atmosphere or sound that you're trying to get for... Um, for sound effects, you know, actual conversation audio, anything like that in in your mix in the uh, film setting. As a music producer for, for my needs, sometimes this might feel a little overwhelming just based on what I'm used to searching for through reverb presets, um, just because there are so many options. But like any of the ones that I've really kind of clicked into have really sounded quite good. So um, I don't know if I <laughs> have a problem with with that many options that, that we're seeing. So uh, like if let's just play around with a couple more just to just to kind of hear some of the ones that I haven't played with yet. So let's do um, let's do one of these mountainous ones, like a fairly long one and just see what that starts us out with. So it's got a nice pre-delay on it. Just gonna turn this up so we can hear it a little more. 
Yeah, so it's kind of going more with that echoey for the mountain uh, setting there. Let's see if there's something maybe a little more, yeah, this like dense forest. Let's try that. Yeah, pretty cool little atmosphere that it's got going for that preset. You've got, of course, in addition to all the spaces that we were just talking through, um, you've got a lot of the gear-based reverb. So I had the plate reverb pulled up earlier, uh, but you can, let's go ahead and pull up a spring type reverb here. Try that out. So the, I would say the nice thing about these is um, any of the presets that I've been playing around with so far, uh, you know, I'm, I've mostly been playing with the levels here. Uh, you know, the, how about just balancing how much of the dry signal I want with the wet signal. And then occasionally messing with the length here, just depending on what, uh, what feeling I'm going for. And what I've found when I'm using a lot of other reverbs is, um, especially if they have like a density knob or they, they just have more controls. I'm trying to think of some of the, the names of it. It's like, it's like density. Um, oh, let's just pull up chroma verb here. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking of some of the stock ones uh size yep like size and distance and so you you, have, you start to have a couple of these other um controls that i spent a decent amount of time playing with to get the sound that i feel like fits uh so i'll just i'm just going to kind of cycle through some of these um and i so far feel like i've gotten to a happier spot more quickly with the reverb presets that I've been playing with here on Lucid Verb, if that makes if that makes any sense. So, like for example, like this one, like you know, it's it feels pretty nicely mixed in, and I haven't even like touched the EQ curves. You know, um, normally when I'm doing a reverb, like let's say it's on a bus, um, and uh, oh, I, of course, I don't have this one set up, but but you know, normally I'll have I'll already have a lot of you know like labby road settings, some some mid pass stuff uh, going through on the reverb uh, that's on that Augs track, and um, even just setting that up here, uh, I found that I haven't needed to do as much manual sculpting of the reverb itself to get it to feel right. So I don't know what it is about the presets that I've been playing with uh, that, that makes them just kind of feel like they fit faster. Um, it, it just, it, that's, that's just something I've noticed as I've started playing around with this is I feel like I've liked the sounds from the reverb faster. You know, it might, like I said, I have to play with the levels a little bit, but getting the quality of reverb that I want I don't have to twist as many knobs to get there. So um, that's something I've really liked about this so far. Of course, if you do want to start digging into sculpting those sounds, uh, you know, you've got your parametric EQ here. Um, so as we play around, I'll just go to just the reverb here. No, you can do all of that just from directly within the reverb here. Um, so if this were on a bus, for example, I wouldn't necessarily need to use another EQ after it. I could just do it directly in the Lucid Verb plugin itself. Uh, so let's go ahead and just bring that back. And... Okay, well, okay, yep. So this that was just uh, <laughs> this is the first time I'm clicking on some of these, but they have even more controls here. So instead of just Bell, you can start to change some of these other... Uh, yep other controls on the drop-off point or just how it's um, the the shape of, of each of those parametric EQ points. 
So a little more control there that I hadn't even played with yet, <laughs> just uh, kind of accidentally clicked on it. We've gone through the, you know, just sheer number of presets. I think there are around 400 or over 400. So a lot of these. And again, like you see all these vehicles down here, just feeding into my point of this seems like it's perfect for people in film, especially. And the next point I made was just the quality of sound and just, I feel like I'm able to get to a reverb that fits pretty quickly without having to move a lot of knobs. Um, so they have a lot of controls available, as you can see. Um, but I, you know, there aren't a lot of those like density, space, all those other things that I feel like just, I have to, I have to move those on other reverbs, like the stock logic one, just to get it to sound good to start with versus here. It's a lot more just choosing which length I want and how wet or dry I want it. The next point was actually something I was, one of the reasons I was excited to try this out was I saw the support for uh, more spatial audio and uh, the surround formats and Dolby Atmos. So something I hadn't really done yet. And I had gotten AirPods recently <laughs> partly to try out uh, more spatial audio and, and get more uh, familiar with that space. So this was a great push for me to dive into that even more. And you can see I've got this Logic project set up for uh, Dolby Atmos, actually. So um, this individual track here, this just has, um, you know, it's just a stereo instrument. So it's just using the stereo reverb so far that we've looked at. And one of the features here on Lucidverb is reverb panning within this uh, to begin with. So let me just reset this. <laughs> we'll, we'll revisit that in a second. But here, I can pan my reverb left to right here just based on uh, the setting here within Lucidverb. Once I uh, start involving spatial audio mixing, so um, if you're unfamiliar with uh, how this works, one of the things you can do is you send this output as a 3D object panner uh, to Atmos, and then you can place it within the 3D uh, space as your as, as part of your mix. So what that means is, let's say that instead of having it front and center, like I just set it to, let's go ahead and put this music box back, and then we'll play with the height too even. Because this is uh, the, just the stereo reverb, that's not going to be reflected as one of the options here. Um, but let's show where that does come into play. So in my master chain here, I'm sending it to my Atmos renderer here. And after that Atmos rem renderer, um, let's say that I want to put, uh, just just to show the uh, lucid verb capabilities for um, multi-channel formats. I put this lucid verb format afterwards and it's a 7.14.4 format. And here in the spatial audio, I have more options now. So if I'm listening here, I can still go left to right. However, I can also do top to bottom now. And I can put that in a 3D space too. Again, you know, I feel like in the music space, music production, we're just starting to see a little more common um, mentions of Dolby Atmos and, and um, you know, spatial audio and some of the binaural things that are going on in, in mixing now. And, and those are starting to become a little more well-known and, and uh, you're just seeing them more. In the film space, again, I, I keep going back to that. I feel like that's, that's much more of a, more than a nice to have. And, um, you know, seeing the capabilities here, 
again, I feel like it fits really nicely into the film space for, uh, for what you're going to need for pretty much anything <laughs> on the, on just creating space with the reverb in those more complex surround formats. And just to show a couple examples here of that same reverb on a vocal instead of just on a um, on a music box, let's just go through some of these presets, play around a little bit on the sounds that we have uh, on a vocal. So let's pull that up, give it a try. Say goodbye to my love of silence. You're gonna hear from me. Won't deny one drop of violence I'm burning but turned over the leaves Say goodbye to my love of silence You're gonna hear from me Won't deny one drop of violence I'm burning but turned over the leaves Say goodbye So just a little sampling there of hearing the vocals with the lucid verb reverb on there. Uh, as I was going through that, it also reminded me of another feature that I have neglected to share until now. So this is um, basically exactly for what we were just going through there. But you can uh, load up a rehearsal uh, audio piece. So you can load in a an audio file here and Take then... And instead of having to play through the same thing here, you can just have that audio file. Uh, you can have a, four different ones loaded up here and preview the reverb on those four. So, you know, in my mind, what I'd probably do is have like something like this harmony vocal loaded. Uh, maybe if I were in film, I would have different types of dialogue or sound effects, like maybe a, a common sound effect, like footsteps in one, uh, a just conversational audio from people in another and um you know it's different common things that i'm trying to to try out or that are representative of what i'm trying to look at for the reverb so for me for music it'd probably be like background vocal lead vocal you know drums and guitar or something like that to to hear uh to preview them more easily so here you know So you can hear that one. Uh, had to turn it up for a second there. And a pretty crazy one there. Uh, that one's that one's super interesting. That's going to do it for the walkthrough today of Lucid Verb. So just to recap, I'll walk through the main things that. I feel were the most standout for Lucid Verb. You know, starting off, just huge number of presets. I think there were over 400. So you've got lots of options to get started with something that's already been crafted for you. The second point was just how quickly I felt like I was able to get to a quality reverb sound that that mixed in, that fit in well with my mix. So, you know, 
not having as many knobs that I feel like I had to change to get it to sound good. And it was really more of a taste thing on, um, you know, length of the reverb and then how wet or dry it was. And then the last standout point was dealing with more advanced multi-channel mixes, which was new for me, uh, gave me a great reason to get into spatial audio, Dolby Atmos, and just seeing how this can play with a lot of those more complex setups. So, you know, as a music producer, it's got plenty. It's got more than I need for my daily use of reverb. Uh, the, the good thing is that all of it that I've tried so far sounds really great and it was pretty quick to get there. I didn't need to spend a lot of time playing with it to get something that sounded good. Those same things that might be nice to haves as a music producer, I can see being more than nice to haves for someone working with audio and film. And Lucid Verb seems like it would fit very well for those more advanced multi channel requirements for film audio. Hopefully, you found this video helpful. And if you think that Lucid Verb can help your projects, make sure you check out the deal that's going on for it at Audio Plugin Deals. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.